The Gaussian integral is a mathematical classic, and we know it evaluates to the square root of pi. And if you just pop in a positive real number up here, then the result is only altered slightly in the fact that we have to divide by a in the square root as well. And we also further know that this is an even function. So instead of integrating from negative to positive infinity, we could just integrate from zero to positive, positive infinity and double the result. However, what were to happen if I replace a by the imaginary unit i, where i is the square root of negative one? And we're interested in both cases where it could be a positive i or a negative i. Does the result change accordingly in a simple manner where all we have to do is replace a by either positive or negative i? Or is there any uh, other kind of wild mathematics involved here? So let's check this out. So we're going to be integrating from 0 to infinity e to the positive and negative i x squared. And in my previous video on the Fresnel integrals, we already covered the case of e to the negative i x squared. However, we will cover both the positive and negative cases simultaneously in this video. Yes, we're going to cover them simultaneously. However, uh, one other motivation for this video is uh, an old video by Dr. Pi M, one of my favorite mathematicians on YouTube. In that video, Dr. Pi M evaluated both the Fresnel integrals by integrating from 0 to infinity e to the i x squared dx, which is the positive case of our discussion. And he used techniques similar to, well, exactly the same techniques uh, you would have used or you would remember using when first evaluating the Gaussian integral, meaning multivariable calculus and then changing to polar coordinates. So he used that same technique and uh, ran into some trouble with convergence. However, uh, that's not much of an issue because he already stated in the video that this is not a rigorous approach and uh, he's not using any rigorous mathematics behind this technique. So he was just having fun with the integral at that time, which is perfectly fine. I mean, he's a brilliant mathematician anyway, and he has great videos on YouTube as well. So every mathematician has the right to play around with rigor and integrals and stuff like that. So yeah, that's, so, that's totally fine on his part. And the reason he said that he's uh, presented that technique of his or the reason he uploaded that video is because it's a very cool approach. So it deserved to be shared. And yes, I agree that is a very, very cool approach to the Fresnel integrals. However, I am going to be adding one more layer of rigor to the discussion and evaluate both the positive and the negative cases simultaneously. So let's just get started. We're interested in the integral from zero to infinity of e to the positive or negative i x squared and immediately we can make use of a substitution to make our lives much easier. Let x squared equal to t which implies that x equals the square root of t which further implies that dx equals 1 by 2 square root t dt. So that means our integral transforms into the integral from 0 to infinity. Obviously, the limits of integration aren't going to change, right? So we, so we have e to the plus minus i t times this factor here of t to the negative 1 by 2. And we have a 1 by 2 outside and the differential element, of course. Now, this integral can be evaluated quite easily using uh, the Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform of t to the r, where r is greater than negative 1, is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times t to the r dt. And this sorts out to using our table of Laplace transforms to the gamma function of r plus 1 divided by s to the r plus 1. Immediately, we notice that the Laplace transform does a pretty good job of uh, sorting out our integration. So we have t to the negative one half. So that means r equals negative one by two. Okay, cool. And uh, as far as the parameter s is concerned, the parameter s should be equal to negative i for sorting out the 
positive integral because two negatives make a positive. And for the negative case, you're going to need a positive i. So s equals minus plus i in that order. So plugging in this information into uh, the results of our uh, the results of the Laplace transform, that means we have i equal to one half of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the plus minus i t t to the negative one half dt equals gamma r plus one. Now if r equals negative one by two, then we have gamma one by two divided by minus plus i to the one by two. And of course this factor of one by two as well. So now we have stuff that we're quite familiar with. Gamma one by two is in fact the square root of pi, correct? So we now know that the integral equals the square root of pi by two uh, times one by negative positive i to the one by two. And taking care of this uh, imaginary term, taking care of this uh, imaginary number here, these two imaginary numbers is no big deal at all. And we have to take care of them. We have to simplify them uh, so that we can separate into uh, real and imaginary parts for a very, very cool result. So anyway, we have i and negative i. One thing that comes in really handy here is negative i equals one by i. So negative i equals i to the negative one, correct? So we have i which equals e to the i pi by two, correct? So if you take, uh, if you take the exponent to be one by two, we have, uh, this implies that the square root of i equals e to the i pi by four. So that's one case sorted out. And as far as this term here is concerned, if you take the exponent to be one by two and just ignore this intermediary and neg uh, one by two again, one by two again, wait a second, wait a second, made a mistake, made a mistake, made a mistake. Take negative one by two instead. Okay, now that looks much better. So negative one by two, negative one by two, and let's just leave it as negative one by two. Yeah, sorry about that. Almost messed up big time, big time there. Now, however, I have redeemed myself and sorting all of this stuff out. We have i to the one by two here when you multiply negative one and one by two, which is e to the i pi by two to the one by two, which is e to the i pi by four, correct? So here are the two cases sorted out for the negative and the positive cases. Now, hopefully we can keep track of the negative signs properly. So we have the square root of pi by two and the negative case, the negative case here gave you e to the positive i pi by four and the positive case, the one down here, gave you e to the negative i pi by four. So this was actually kind of fun, you know, the keeping track of the positive and negative signs. And now finally we can use that beautiful Euler's formula. So e to the i t equals uh, the cosine of t plus i times the sine of t. So this implies that our integral i equals square root pi by two, uh, cosine of plus minus pi by four plus i times the sine of plus minus pi plus minus pi by four. And now we can just make use of the fact that uh, the cosine is an even function, so no matter what the sign of the argument, you are still going to get uh, the same answer regardless. So you will get the cosine of pi by 4, which is 1 by square root 2, and the sine function now, that is uh, an odd function. So if there's a negative sign, you can pull it out, and this is i times sine pi by 4, which is once again uh, 1 by square root 2. And on further simplification, you have... Uh, Okay, remember 2 times square root 2 is square root 8. So that means you have square root pi by 8 plus i plus or minus square root pi by 8. 
and this is the result of the uh, this is the uh, uh, the result on the evaluation of the integral from zero to infinity of positive and negative i x squared dx. Now, coming back to uh, Dr. Payam's result, Dr. Payam used the positive scenario. So the positive scenario, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the i x squared dx, which is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, once again using Euler's formula, we have the cosine of x squared plus i times the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x squared dx. This is equal to square root pi by 8 plus i times the square root of pi by 8. And that is a horrible 8 over there. Sorry about that. So we get the correct results. The integral from 0 to infinity of the cosine of x squared is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the sine of x squared. And the answer is the square root of pi by 8. And this is awesome. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.